we're just going to get things started. As Kevin alluded to, the Pac-12 is falling apart. Apparently, the ACC is next. And so, Javon, I'm going to throw it to you first because even though I am a Stanford fan, that is well documented, you are a passionate USC football fan. So much so that you proclaim that Caleb Williams would be top 15 in the NFL right now. Even your own cousin who plays in the NFL had to disagree, but you feel passionately about that. <laughs> and so <laughs> what do you think about the Pac-12 falling apart and also your Trojans coming to, like Kevin said, the big boy conference? Well, like I said, I mean, you know, we're a big boy caliber organization program we're gonna go to you know where we feel like we can elevate ourselves we thought that the big 10 was uh the best conference to go to um obviously you know it's a very prestigious conference you got michigan you got penn state you got michigan state oh wait he's trying so hard ohio state is also in the conference too i forgot about them um no, I just – USC saw this a long time ago. There's just been a lot going on with the Pac-12 and just conference winning alignment, money, Apple, which was the particular deal that they had in place for the Pac-12. Um, it was basically subscription-based from what my understanding was. Um, the Pac-12 had a deal in place with Apple that kind of coincided with all of the schools in the Pac-12 saying, hey – we got this deal in place, but originally they had a deal with ESPN that they turned down that basically locked them in $30 million per school. Um, Pac-12 commissioner was looking to get $50 million, and they thought that, hey, we can go out and make something else happen. We can get a better deal, basically. And that deal was ultimately pulled by ESPN. And now USC, we saw it a mile away, okay? We saw it a mile away. UCLA saw it a mile away, like, hey, so we ain't got no deal. Like we're supposed to be getting renewed and everybody else is locking in their TV deals and Pac-12 is kind of just standing around, you know, kind of with their dicks in their hands. Like, Hey, we're, <laughs> what are we doing? Reference. And then, um, so you, USC saw this tomorrow way. I mean, we already got the schedule for next year. We're about to be in the big 10. <laughs> like it, everything's kind of set for us next year. And now it's kind of just like, okay, all these like, Oregon, Utah, um, you know, there's only four teams left. So, I mean, everybody else is pretty much like, hey, Dion saw it was like, what, hey, what's going on with TV deal? Something ain't right. And then, you know, when Dion is, hasn't even played it down or hasn't even coached it down in the Pac-12 and is already trying to leave, that's kind of, I thought, when, you know, things started to roll a little bit. And then, you know, we saw Oregon um, – is also joining the Big Ten as well. So when you start seeing schools like those powerhouse schools in the Pac-12 as well, that are also joining the Big Ten, joining the Big 12, you know, Utah, our rival, as Kevin and Sean want to say. They're not rivals, um, they whip your ass. Okay. It's um, yeah, not a rivalry if one team wins all the time. They're also going to the Big 12. So um, the Big 12, I kind of thought, was starting to die a little bit, but then they started kind of accumulating most of the Pac-12 schools. And it's just started absorb absorbing them, and then you're hearing rumors about the ACC, Florida State. Um, they part they partnered with uh, J.P. Morgan, aka Chase. That's Chase. They're trying to raise some money to ultimately leave the ACC. Um, I think we already heard that Clemson is kind of you know in the midst of leaving the ACC as well, but um, it's kind of just a matter of when versus um, where um, they're going to end up leaving too. But I feel like FSU. And Clemson, they kind of feel like SEC type schools because they're already in the South, you know, have play, playing LSU and, you know, um, then playing them again. And then last year going all the way down to the wire, the final extra point, LSU, Florida State. So it just kind of seems like they would be meant for the SEC. Clemson, you know, having those battles with Alabama and uh, LSU in those national championship games, it kind of just feels like they would belong in the SEC. Um not too sure where those two schools would join next, but I mean, uh, the remaining schools left are Cal, um, Washington State, I think Oregon State, and Stanford. Um, Stanford I, is, a, is an Olympic um, program. They breed Olympic athletes from swimming, track, um, and they're a very prestigious school. So it's like, 
all the Brainiacs go there. They're basically the West Coast uh, Harvard. So it's kind of like, I feel like they're, they wouldn't be pressed for cash if anything like that. As far as um, athletics go, I feel like Cal is a more team that would need to be probably a part of a conference. I feel like Stanford, if, they're, if it really came down to it, they could be independent. But at the same time, um, they would probably like to join a conference. Um, it's kind of looking like the ACC is going to absorb Cal and Stanford from the reports that I've been seeing. Um, but as far as, you know, the rest of the teams, you know, Oregon State, Washington State, where are they going to go? Um, are they just going to join the the Mountain West? I mean, that's kind of, I mean, it's not the best conference, but I mean, they need someone to throw them a, <laughs> a life jacket. So. Um, I feel like the team left in the Pac-12, well, the Pac-4. Uh, Stanford is probably the least – they have options. I feel like they could go here, they can go there, or they can kind of just do whatever they want, kind of like what Notre Dame does. But I feel like the rest of the three schools are kind of looking for a conference to throw them um, a, a life vest and, you know, save them, essentially. So USC is good. Is, that's all that I know. Um, I can, really can't wait for them to be in the Big Ten and, you know, get to play all of these top schools. It could help them with recruiting, um, just b- them being on, you know, bigger platforms than the Pac-12 was able to provide. Um, you know, the Big Ten is, is arguably, or it is the second best conference, I believe, in college football. So why not be able to be on that stage? Now joining us is our guy, Gary Singh. Gary, how are we doing today? Not this week, because we're back for two episodes, but how are we doing today on this Friday? Chilling, chilling, my guys. Ready? A little beautiful day, beautiful Friday. Let's get it. And so, as Javon mentioned, Oregon and Washington, they're going to join the Big Ten. Arizona, Arizona State, Colorado, and Utah are going to the Big 12 in 2024. That leaves Stanford, Cal, Oregon State, Washington State, Florida State. They're looking to leave the ACC for more revenue because they're seeing how much more the powerhouse programs and other conferences like the SEC and Big Ten are getting. And so, Kevin, after all of that, I simply ask you, what the fuck is going on in college football? Dude, I have no idea. I've been talking to everybody I can about this, scrolling through Twitter. Uh, these are some of the best rivalries in football. You know, when you look at Oregon, Oregon State, and Washington, and Washington State, like those are traditional – Rivalries that happen been going on since we can remember. So them not joining the Big 12 as well is kind of interesting. Like Toddy mentioned, we saw USC and UCLA say, all right, if we're leaving, we're going together. So it's interesting to see that these uh, rivalry games might not be played anymore unless, you know, they catch each other in a bowl game or off or uh, at a league schedule. But this is going to be crazy because I mentioned before the show, uh, being a Pac-12 kid our whole life, you know, being on the West Coast, this is all we see, this is all we know. And, and now things are changing, but – Definitely out of the best team or the remaining teams, I think Stanford has the most to uh, give to a conference. Like Toddy mentioned, they breed uh, all kind of athletes. So I think – and I think they're going to be the best addition. Cal hasn't had a too good of a season. Oregon State is on the come up. Um, last year they did really well. And I believe Toddy sent us a list, and I believe they're in the top 25. I don't know where in the top 25. Oregon State? Uh, yeah. Yeah, they are. Yeah, so they're somewhere in there. But they did really well last season. They got DJ. I'm not even going to try to announce his name. Uwe Ugalele, that dude? Uwe <laughs> Yeah, that guy. So they're going to be really good this year. So they're going to be another good addition to another one of these Power 5 conferences. It would really hurt me to see uh, uh, Washington State not be in a Power 5 conference. Toddy mentioned the Mountain West. So it would be really interesting. to It would be really sad to see him or see them go. But um, I'm ready to just kind of see where this all kind of unfolds. Gary, I know that you're not a big college football guy. But, I mean, this is kind of crazy. We almost – seem like we're headed to two super conferences in college football and maybe even eventually just one. So what are your thoughts on this situation? Like you mentioned, Sean, me just being a novice and casual watching college football, I've just been kind of sitting back and looking how everyone has different perspectives, to be honest. Like you guys mentioned, people who are like locked in and want, you know, the old ways to stay. And then some people like Vaughn kind of mentioned where like new rivalries and new like – Big time matchups are going to be created uh, created due to this all this movement in the college football ranks and in other sports as well. So I, to be honest with you, I think it's a good thing. I know you know like Kev just mentioned losing that nostalgia of those like 
big rivalry games is probably going to be a big impact, especially for those schools that, you know, really look forward to that to be a big money maker for them. But in terms of just the overall moves, I feel like each team is like kind of doing the best they can for themselves and which makes sense. And uh, it makes sense in college because to be honest, like we all know, they don't have a CEO or something like they don't have someone who's control like an Adam Silver or a commissioner really that's control all of them. They can make a joint decision. So they're kind of all on their own. So it kind of understands how these are just purely being made as business moves. And I think it's going to be good overall at the end of the day for each of these schools, because like you guys are mentioning, I think it's in my opinion, you know, even though it might be dwindling down certain conferences that we love, obviously being like you guys said, the West Coast kids, Pac-12 has always been the main thing out here. But I think just us joining these other big conferences is going to help us maybe bring some better athletes and better competition and just <coughs> overall better games to the college football uh spotlight so i feel like that's the main thing i feel like that's pretty good for the sport and to be honest i can't wait to see how it develop and change i know sean just mentioned maybe one day it might become one big old conference i always thought that as a kid i was like why don't they just make a big old conference they all just play each other but now looking obviously when i'm older kind of noticing like just the logistics of all that and maybe also because of just the competitive natures you know some things are just unfair and unfair matchups so it's going to be interesting how these schools react and how like recruiting changes and how those dynamics change. But overall, I think it's going to be a good thing for college sports. Javon, I want to pose this question to you uh, in, in this way, just to continue this discussion here, because before all of this madness, the big talk with college football was whether or not they were going to expand the college football playoff, going from four teams to six or to eight, maybe even to 12, 16. 12 seems to be the best number, in my opinion, because then you give those top four seeds a bye. You get eight other teams in there. They all duke it out. And then the winners from those four games end up facing the top four seeds and likely get annihilated. But at least they got a shot and they have no reason to complain like a Central Florida in previous years that went undefeated but missed out they could get clapped in the college football playoffs so then they don't have shit to say, just like Cincinnati as well from a couple of years ago. And so uh, how do you think all of this fluctuation is going to affect the college football playoff going forward, Javon? Um, even with uh, even going back to what you were saying, uh, when Alabama played Washington, I think it was the first year of the college football playoff and they got destroyed by Alabama. Um, I mean, we're going to see a lot of teams that, you know, probably in weaker conferences, they might go undefeated and they'll win their conference and they'll go up against a SEC team and get thraxed by three touchdowns. They'll probably be a three touchdown dog in that game. Um, as far as the playoff goes, um, with conference realignment, I feel like it's going to start changing uh, things a little bit because a lot of conferences are now getting bigger and they're getting rid of, you know, sub conferences that make sense. So like the big 10 is starting to, get rid of the Big Ten, like West or whatever, the Big Ten East. This is just going to be the Big Ten. So the top two teams of the entire conference are going to be playing in the Big Ten championship game versus it would be usually, you know, the best team from the Big Ten West versus the best team in the Big Ten East, and then they will play against each other. So now, now the conferences are getting bigger, they may want to consider going back to that same method just because of how big the conferences are getting, like the Big Ten is – has 18 teams in it, which is insane. Um, the Big 12, big I think, has, the Big 12 has 16 teams, if I'm not mistaken. So, um, I think if they stick with how the conferences are currently, like the way that it's kind of um, set up already, it wouldn't really affect how the playoff would go now. Because let's say you don't necessarily have to play in the Big Ten; you don't necessarily necessarily have to win your conference. Like Alabama last year didn't play for their conference championship or their the SEC championship because they lost to LSU. LSU ended up playing Georgia, and then Georgia ended up ultimately destroying LSU. And they ended up playing – or uh, Georgia ended up going, obviously, on to winning the national championship. But if LSU – that was kind of like a winner go home sense for LSU. Now if LSU plays in that game, lose to Georgia – the number one team in the nation, they could still be in the national championship or they, or they could still be in talks for a national championship game. Now, a lot of people are going to push back and say, hey, we just saw Georgia, Alabama play in the SEC championship. Why do we have to watch them play a month later in the playoff? The SEC, with it being the best conference that it is 
in the whole entire country, you're going to see a bunch of SEC teams in the in this 12 team playoff. You're going to see, you know, Georgia, LSU, Alabama. They're going to dominate pretty much that 12 team playoff. You're going to see your obviously you're going to see your Ohio State, your Michigans. Um, you're probably going to now get some Pac-12 teams in there. Um, well, that will be a part of the Big Ten, but you'll start to see teams like USC, um, Utah, Oregon will probably be in, in there. Um, you'll see those type of teams who usually lose their – they don't win their, their conference and ultimately wouldn't be able to get into the playoff. So you'll start to see those other teams who played really well during the regular season but probably slipped up losing to a, a USC, using to a, a Utah or a Washington. But you'll probably start to see those teams now and see, okay, what happens if they go up against this team? Now, ultimately, it could just be, hey, if they're going up against LSU, they're going to get tranced, right? Two touchdowns. They're going to be two touchdown dogs. That's usually what it is when SEC teams usually play a Pac-12 team or when they play. Not, not so necessarily the case with Big Ten teams. Because Big Ten teams are usually known to hold their own, and Ohio State ultimately ended up beating Alabama in, I think it was the first playoff ever, if I'm not mistaken, in 2014. Damn right. Um, Don't forget when it. They had, when they had, uh, you know, Zeke, uh, Michael Thomas, all those guys. So, oh um, it's going to be – getting up to go get yeah. this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you're going <laughs> to – this is crazy. So, um, you're, you're going to see a lot more um, – <laughs> You're going to see a lot more um, different teams who we thought that were top teams in the conference as Sean is showing up to the Ezekiel Elliott jersey, who is does not does not have a team, by the way. He's not signed by anybody in the league. <laughs> hey, he's a national champion that. forever. <laughs> <laughs> he's showing off his Ezekiel Elliott jersey. But we're, we're going to see a bunch of these teams like, you know, Penn State will probably be in there. We'll see, you know, obviously Ohio State. We'll see all the best teams. And most of the conferences, like the three best teams or four best teams in each conference will probably be in that 12-team playoff. And we'll get to see what the fourth best team in the Big Ten looks like versus the fourth best team in the SEC. And that will ultimately decide everything. But the, the crazy part uh, that we'll probably lose, games that we'll lose is like the Rose Bowl we'll lose. I think we're going to lose the Cotton Bowl. Um, so just those little bowl games um, Why do you we'll think probably that? lose – they're getting rid of it. Like they're the Rose they Bowl is not going like to be. Officially? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like oh, the Rose Bowl is not going to be a part of anything. Um, I think the Cotton. They also said the Cotton Bowl is not going to be a part of anything. Like going forward with the twelve team playoff. So um, it's just going to be very interesting. Um, a lot of people are kind of pushing back because conference realignment. I know I'm going in on a tangent a little bit, but I, a lot of people okay, are kind of pushing it. back. A lot of people are going back on conference realignment just because, oh, the tradition. We're getting rid of this. You don't think if USC and uh, or uh, Ohio State is going on at night, no one's going to watch that, or Michigan versus Oregon, these are going to be big games that are going to be on that. People are going to watch. I know as sure as hell I'm going to be watching because I'm going to be gambling on the game. <laughs> so you're going to see – I'm going to be locked in for sure. But I think these games are just going to get bigger, and a lot of people are going to watch. And ultimately, it's kind of – it's a business. College football is a business at the end of the day. And they're trying to go wherever they can, you know, display all of their, their talents and get the most money possible. So, Gary, I want to ask you next, because with our interview with Kevin Thompson's uh, former Sac State quarterback on Monday, when I sent him the list of topics that we originally had planned, but we ultimately just went with the interview the whole time. Uh, but one of the topics was the, this topic with uh, basically college football, Pac-12 falling apart. And he said that he, he might not have too much to say about it. But I instantly thought to myself, I was like, OK, I want to get his athlete perspective on it, because the thing is, and we see it a lot more with other sports. And I, I've mentioned it before with like softball and tennis and whatever, that now all of these athletes who thought that they committed somewhere, and they'll be able to play close to home, like someone who who came from California, went to Oregon and thought that they were going to be playing against teams all on the West Coast. Now, if their parents want to go see them play, Javon, they have to go to Michigan. <laughs> and that's not ideal. Yeah. And so, Gary, just the question I have for you is just how do you think this could be? I, I, w I don't want to say detrimental because that's me already giving my opinion on it. But how do you expect this to affect the student athletes and not just the football players? 
Yeah, you know, I did hear this earlier about how, like, since they're going to be having longer travel, you know, it's going to affect a lot of these uh, kids schooling, you know, because they might have to leave earlier in the week for games and things of the situation. To be honest with you, Sean, I think the kids that signed their deal and, you know, they're already going to be in their school or they're already signed within these two years here while, you know, obviously knowing the decision. I think it's just going to be – that's how the cookie crumbles sometimes. Not everyone likes how COVID went down, and they're not going to like when, you know, your school is making deals for money. At the end of the day, that's what matters to these schools. So in terms of classes, I guess you really – you know, if you really want to be a student athlete now, you're really going to – you know, especially the athlete part of it, you're really going to want to be locked in because, you know, some of these sports I just kind of do feel bad sometimes because – you know, you come to a school to play a sport, you know, that you love and you're getting a free education with a part of it. But now, like, you know, you still, if it's a sport, let's say softball, quote unquote, you know, that doesn't really have a professional league out here in America that's, you know, prime timing at the moment. So for like them, they're just getting, you know, there's a lot of sacrifice in school basically to go play these games, which, you know, at the end of the day might not be the most beneficial if they can't get their schoolwork done. So I think there's going to be have to be a way for obviously these schools that know that, you know, the obviously school is one of the top priorities, obviously choosing where you want to go. So I think hopefully that's going to be a big, uh, big development in this whole switch up for these schools that they can help these kids out and make sure they can still get their education, you know, because we're looking at maybe the one percenters who are going to make the league after the first two years in the NFL or maybe go to the NBA after the first year, things of that nature, or, you know, it's not going to really bother them at the long run. You know, they're just, still, they're just there to really just get that one year and get to the league they want to get to. But, you know, all these other athletes who are going for like the educational part, you know, getting that stuff paid for, it's going to be really tough for them. So I feel like it's going to be an adjustment period, but I think it's going to be overall uh, figured out, to be honest with you, Sean. So, Kevin – we can just forget about the SEC because like this all started just for the sake of this discussion right now, because this all started with Texas and Oklahoma leaving the big 12 and going to the SEC. I'm not really worried about the SEC because I still think that Alabama, Georgia, they're going to continue to dominate that conference, but bringing things closer to home with our fandom, Kevin, as Ohio state fans, Jay Vaughn's team is now joining the Big Ten, and he is uber confident that they will continue to play well in the Big Ten when they can't even beat Utah. And so how do you think that this is going to affect the Buckeyes, Michigan, and the behemoths in the Big Ten? Do you think that this is going to knock them down a couple notches, or do you think that they could continue to dominate just like I believe Alabama and Georgia will in the SEC? I definitely believe Ohio State and Michigan will continue to dominate Ohio, Oregon or not Oregon. USC is definitely going to bring a different touch to the offense. You know, in the Big Ten, there's a lot more power run. It's not as spread out as the, the technically the West Coast offense. Uh, I know it's really popular now, but that's really was made in USC. So that's what they do. Uh, they don't really play a lot of defense, as Toddy says. So they, they're a team that's going to come in there and put up a lot of points. Uh, so it's definitely going to shock the Big Ten. You know, if you're not coming to play uh, one night or one Saturday afternoon, you can get 50 put on your head. So there is definitely going to be a big, uh, big change. But I definitely think the teams that are on top are going to stay on top. I really wouldn't know who would be the favorite in the the third favorite in the Big Ten because usually always Ohio State or Michigan. So maybe USC can kind of fall into that third every year. But it, it's going to be hard for them, like Gary mentioned. You know, these kids are used to you know the only place they're really playing in rain is or uh, Oregon. Now you got to go a whole, you got to go across the country to go play in a game. It snows in them in Oregon or Ohio State and Michigan. So it, they can play in the snow. So these kids are used to walking around campus with flip-flops and thong flip-flops, and now they're going to have to bring their Tims out. So it's going to be interesting to see these uh, West Coast kids come play on the, East, on the East Coast and the same vice versa. Unless anyone else has anything else to say about um, football, go ahead. Kind of just, another thing going into it is to um, usually when teams lose a game, their season's over. Um, with this new 12-team playoff, Teams could lose two, maybe even three games and still kind of be like, all right, we're, we're still kind of in the mix. Um, because it's rare because like, oh, uh, one lost team getting in is over this 12-0 and team? This is, I feel like all that's going to get deaded now. And, you know, teams could be playing in their third game of the season and lose and, oh, our fucking season's over. Like, we have nothing else to play for. And we're going to play in the Cotton Bowl, this, that, and the third. I feel like now with this 12-team playoff, it still kind of gives teams a little bit more leeway. Um, it may, you know, kind of hinder whatever the meaning of conference titles. But at the same time, you'll those 
teams that usually win the conference titles will usually be those top four teams that end up going in. So I feel like the system that we had in place before will now kind of, you know, uh, carry on a little bit with this 12-team playoff. 